Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, firstly, thanks uh, to Henry for inviting me to this forum. Uh, my research group uh, is focused on signal processing, and uh, which is concerned with extracting useful information from measurements which are contaminated by noise and disturbance. And the primary applications we consider in our group are, prime, uh, are wireless communications and uh, RF sensing, including radar. And our objective is to try to achieve reliable communication and sensing performance and provide efficient solutions uh, in terms of uh, energy and uh, bandwidth consumption. So in doing so, we have to make extensive use of uh, signal processing tool, mathematics, statistics, and, and machine learning and techniques. So in the next few slides, I will give um, uh, an overview of, of some of our uh, ongoing work. And due to the limited time, I will, you know, I will briefly explain the problem and highlight the challenges. And uh, I would be very happy to provide, uh, to provide additional details and um, uh, for offline for interested people. So, okay, so the first problem is related to the so-called distribute RF sensing. And we started the problem a few years back with AFR and last year we also got a new project with Army in this area. And the problem is basically is to um, use uh, spatially distributed RF sensors and possibly placed on moving platforms such as UAV and to perform sensing functions such as detection, localization and tracking. And there are obvious benefits of doing so because sensor can be placed in close proximity to the target. And you can also gain the so-called spatial diversity because you can probe and observe the environments uh, uh, from different, different aspect angle and that will give you additional uh, benefits in terms of uh, detection estimations and so forth. Now, uh, the technical challenges are and since uh, usually you have to send signals from different sensors uh, and uh, these signals will be transmitted uh, uh, asynchronously, even with perfect timing, and they will be arriving at receiver at different, uh, different times. So that creates a problem in terms of, uh, you know, separate the signal and, and extract useful information. And the second issue is that uh, since the sensor are spatially distributed and they are driven by different oscillators, different timing clocks, and so you obviously have to deal with uh, timing, phase, frequency, uh, synchronization problems. And um, uh, depending on how you process the uh, signals, uh, for example, if you want to do the coherent uh, integration and you need the phase information, so a, a small error can, can generate a large impact. So uh, another issue is related to the so-called excessive Doppler uh, spread because of the mobility and so we have to the signal has a lot of Doppler effects and and we have to deal with them and uh, uh, another sense is the so-called uh, non-homogeneous clutter uh, because uh, we effectively the sensing is the so-called uh, multi-static uh, geometry so that automatically generate uh, the interference which depends on the location of uh, of uh, disturbing uh, like scatters so there's a range dependency and makes it very difficult to estimate uh, uh, their characteristics then for, 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 for the clutter mitigations. So what we are doing um, uh, right now, so we have been working on coherent and non-coherent, coherent detector, non-coherent detectors, and hybrid detectors. And these are different detectors involving different levels of uh, collaboration among the sensors and, sens and synchronization requirement. And another thing we're working on is that we're looking um, into uh, mathematic models by taking into uh, account things like sparsity and uh, uh, parametric models for clutter mitigations. And um, as uh, uh, the performance certainly depends on what kind of signal you transmit from the transmitter side. So we're looking for an appropriate signal waveform design. And uh, since, uh, as I already mentioned, timing synchronization is a, a challenging issue. We're developing like a robust techniques uh, which are insensitive uh, to such a synchronization models. And um, now, uh, you know, one of the application from our sponsor point of view, they're interested in like the so-called low swap operation. Now, in particular, like if you have UAV operations, so you have size and weight and power limitation. So we have to sort of like uh, do all this uh, uh, resource man uh, management uh, optimization in order to provide the best uh, system performance. 
Now, uh, the second uh, topic that we've been working for some time is the so-called passive RF sensing, right? So this is finally joined by NSF and AFRL. Uh, so the, the issue is different from uh, what I discussed in the previous slide. Uh, so we are trying to perform the sensing function by, uh, by exploiting uh, existing wireless resources, such as radio and TV, cellular uh, towers, Wi-Fi, uh, for indoor applications, satellites, so on and so forth. And these are called illuminator of opportunities or IOs. Now, the benefits are obvious. Uh, so you have uh, covertness, right? Because you don't transmit your silent. It's very difficult for detect the presence of such sensors. So this obvious has a military implication. Um, it's also cheap because you do not have transmitters. And another benefit is that it's green. There's no RF pollution. You don't transmit, uh, you know, the, the spectrum is already very crowded. And people are talking about uh, RF pollution. Now, as I mentioned, it's used for not just a military application. And in recent years, there's a, a surge of interest like for civilian applications, such as you can use this for indoor localization, like in a big shopping mall area, a big exhibit halls that you have, you're trying to find, uh, you know, the, the place to to visit um, uh, in terms of like a demonstration, big companies doing those, you know, those are very, uh, very popular in these days. And another application is so-called health monitoring. Uh, you can use uh, like a Wi-Fi transmitters uh, actually, and, and you can build the uh, apps in your cell phone and to monitor seniors and like falls of the seniors and heart heartbeats uh, in, in, in the night times and you know, creating emergency. Uh, so these are some of these applications for this passive um, uh, sensing in recent years. Now, what are the challenges? So the challenges are, uh, unlike active sensing, you design your waveform. So your waveform is optimized for uh, particular functions. Right now you are using uh, communication waveform which are not intended for sensing purposes. So, so that creates uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, constraints and limitation in terms of what the, how you can process the signal. Now, another thing is that uh, uh, because the transmitter are not co-located, you are utilizing existing transmitters, so automatically you have this so-called bi-static geometry. The transmitter and receiver are different locations. So again, that creates uh, range-dependent clutter. Uh, the environment becomes very not very not friendly uh, because uh, it depends on location of uh, of of of, uh, of interference and maybe a, a, a scatter in terms of the clutter points. Now, um, another issue is that uh, because uh, Oftentimes, this might be non-cooperative, meaning that uh, the transmitter is not cooperating uh, for the sensing functions. So you do not have a, a, a good knowledge of the signal that's been transmitted. You probably have some information, but unlike the active sensor, you transmit the signal. You have perfect knowledge of what the signal being transmitted. So this is what we call, you have only noisy references, and that creates some challenges in terms of how you can extract information when you do not know what has been transmitted. And uh, you're also subject to the so-called strong direct pass interference because uh, uh, unlike like uh, active sensing, you actually have a sign and period. You transmit pulses. Uh, so you transmit short pulse and you listen for the echoes. But for communication signals, the signal is constant transmitting. So that creates the so-called direct pass interference, which you cannot avoid. So how to mitigate uh, the, direct, the DPI uh, is, is one major challenge in, in passive sensing. Now, these are some of the things uh, what we are doing, which are particularly, uh, you know, um, targeting on some of these challenges I mentioned, such as uh, uh, developing new signal processing uh, techniques for detection, uh, which takes account into uh, takes, takes into account of the noise reference in the DPI, and um, and uh, we're also looking for distributed MIMO passive systems because obviously you can. Uh, you, you, you can simultaneously access multiple sources, not just a single source uh, for sensing functions. And um, so a mitigation of the multi-paths and clutter in passive sensing environment, that's also one of the things that we, we've been working on uh, in the last few years. All right, so uh, the next one is, uh, uh, this is uh, 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 NS project which started last year, and we have uh, Professor Su Chen Yu from EC Japan as a co PI. Uh, this is uh, to deal with the cooperative communication and RF sensing on shared spectrum. And the background is that uh, the radar is a primary user of, uh, of a prime spectrum below six gigahertz. And this is also a very desirable spectrum band for communication purposes. 
And there's a lot of pressure from the commercial sectors that uh, ask and read to release the spec zone for shared access uh, for communication. Um, but the radar is oftentimes un, you know, real reluctant to share the spectrum because so there's not there's no incentive, and in terms of uh, there's no benefit to radar in terms of improving sensing functions. And and I think the bigger issue is that there's uh, interference and uh, the, the interference from the sen from the communication transmitters can be a, 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 you know can be a disaster uh, to do some of the sensing functions. So uh, our objective is to try to you know, develop new cooperative sense and communication techniques uh, that, that will motivate radar to open its spectrum. And, uh, and these techniques are supposed to provide, um, you know, uh, ensure uh, guarantee and security and even provide benefits for radar, uh, with, uh, which will not be able to, to, to gain if, uh, if, uh, if you do not uh, you know, pursue collaborations. And uh, so, Essentially, uh, we are taking a multifaceted approach uh, involving different levels of collaboration, uh, starting from, from, for example, minimum collaboration, you just sharing some of the uh, system parameters and for the joint design. So essentially the reader and communication still uh, uh, operate independent from each other, uh, but through this uh, joint design and you will be able to use resource in a better way and you will be able to um, uh, Control the interference to accept it uh, to accept to acceptable level, and um, now the next idea is uh, what we call the cooperative illumination, and this involves, uh, for example, uh, the radar utilizes uh, the communication uh, as uh, the illuminator of opportunity, as uh, as as is done in passive sensing. In the meantime, it also transmits the signal. So so this creates uh, not only the benefits of free illumination. At no cost to the radar, and but more importantly, it creates uh, the, the so-called diversity. As I mentioned earlier, you, you have the bi-static geometry, so you have two different observation of the of the environments that will provide the spatial diversity. So in the, in this in this uh, sort of like a, um, paradigm, um, there, there's not really uh, not much cooperation from the communication side because uh, radar is, mo is doing most of the job, other than you know, leveraging the the illumination of uh, of the community. Uh, a communication transmitter. Now we're also realizing a, a more collaborative setup when the communication uh, devices participate in the sensing uh, functions and they can actively perform signal observations, uh, collections, and even processing and to jointly perform uh, some sensing functions. And these were effectively uh, generate uh, the so-called multi-static sensor network. And uh, uh, we have, um, um, you know, uh, we will be able to provide uh, capabilities to radar which will not be possible if radar is functioning by itself. So that's some kind of the idea uh, that we're trying to, you know, uh, try to capitalize and to motivate radar to open up the spectrum for sharing. All right, so uh, this, uh, this work is about um, um, using some of these Bayesian learning and machine learning techniques for uh, for dealing with uh, adaptive uh, detection of, uh, of signal. And when, in particular, when the signal is very weak and is, uh, is dominated by a strong uh, disturbance uh, uh, from the environment. And this is, for example, you may have an airborne radar and trying to detect a moving target. And uh, the, the, the radar senses on a moving platform and high-speed moving platform. So you, uh, the radar receives the reflections, not just from the target, but more from the ground, from man-made objects such as buildings and trees. And these are generally much, much stronger compared, compared to the target, weak target. So the challenge is to, uh, is to mitigate the interference, uh, what we call clutter. And uh, to perform such uh, uh, you know, mitigation, you need to estimate the clutter statistics. And the problem is that uh, this uh, oftentimes requires lots of training data. And in the dynamic environment, you do not have those training data. And uh, the question is how can you, you know, effectively estimate the clutter statistics and perform you know, uh, detection and to expose uh, a weak target. So uh, one of the ideas so-called knowledge aided detection is trying to utilize knowledge on the prior data and prior knowledge, or maybe even prior knowledge about the environment, you know uh, the, the area, you have, it, uh, you have the digital map, and you're trying to take into, those, uh, into account and to perform estimation. Now, and 
there has been some development in that area. And oftentimes, uh, those techniques, the so-called KA detection, uh, is uh, the prior knowledge is represented as a, a prior covariance matrix of the clutter. And, um, and, and this approach still requires a considerable training because, um, because um, uh, you have to sort of combine uh, your prior knowledge with uh, adaptive measurements and, and to come up with a, a compromise or kind of like trade-off between these two prior knowledge versus real-time measurements. So, and the, the estimation is about uh, a covariance matrix and oftentimes, uh, depending on the, the, the system setup, this matrix can be huge. You have lots of spatial channel and, and temporal observations and then and you have to multiply spatial dimension and, spatial and temporal dimension, so it becomes a huge matrix which could be like thousands uh, times thousands. Um, so, so our idea is trying to you know, uh, develop a Bayesian framework, and uh, that's uh, our initial uh, setup. Uh, is try to in incorporate the prior knowledge in a more natural format, instead of like using very abstract covariance matrix. And we're trying to see, incorporate knowledge such as you have knowledge about the environment. You know there's some major color scatters, and you know the geometry, you know the uh, spatial coordinates, and how do you take those into account? Right? But in the meantime, we have to uh, deal with uncertainties, right? And the prior knowledge may be incomplete, and the knowledge be, may become outdated uh, because of the change environment, and the knowledge may contain errors. So, so we're developing Bayesian learning techniques uh, using like, a, so this is showing some kind of like a, a Bayesian uh, uh, graphic models uh, that, uh, that trying to capture the, uh, the relation between the measurements and the hidden variables um, in some statistical uh, um, means and use this uh, to, to do some of the things. Now, we're also extending uh, uh, some of my current st students are working on model assisted using this kind of model and along with data uh, driven um, approach like deep networks for solving such sensing problems. So that kind of like some of these uh, uh, snapshots of what we are doing focus on primarily how uh, we use the signal processing statistic tools and machine learning tools to solve some of the sense and communication problems. And um, again, I appreciate this opportunity and um, you know, I welcome to any kind of our collaborations with Ian Stevens and outside Stevens.